Uh, All right, hey everybody, this is Instant Screaming for some quick video on demand horror recommendations. Today's episode will cover Pernicious and The Possession of Michael King. Pernicious is available on Netflix, and The Possession of Michael King should be available on Amazon Prime. First up, I want to talk about Pernicious. Because I like to get the worst news out of the way first, and Pernicious is a movie that is not good in a very, very specific way. And kind of interesting because it's only not good in that very, very specific way. So as far as what the movie does right, the setting is pretty interesting. The mythology is a little bit more creative and interesting and deeper than the standard backstory that you get for kind of the ghost revenge plot that we've got going on. The story is sensible and interesting and kind of good. The cinematography is very good. It's a very well shot movie. It's pretty creative. If I had a minor gripe, it might be a little bit too nice and too well lit, almost sitcom in a couple of places. The, the blood effects and the gore effects stand out as being very, very good and very, very gross, which is what you're looking for in a gore-centric effects thing. But where the movie completely falls apart is the character writing. The characters are awful and awfully written. No one in this movie, not a single main character, side character, anyone acts like how you'd expect a sensible human being to react in any given situation. They're all cardboard cutouts of awful people. I could be convinced to pass this one off as the actors just not being very good, but to have every single person on the cast fail in the same way, uh, I don't think is reasonable. Um, there's a possession involved, but even the characters that aren't possessed don't act like real people. I just think it was uh, poorly written and just kind of fell on its face and wasted what is otherwise a very good looking movie. Um, I think better acting may have made it more compelling to watch and saved it from somewhat uninteresting scare scenes. So the way the scare scenes played out, and I think part of the reason they failed to stick was that you basically knew that everything was going to come in the set of three because when something spooky was going to happen, it had to happen to this character and then this character and then this character and, and then you knew you were done. Uh, so it had didn't have a whole lot of variety to it. Uh, which just wasn't very compelling to watch because you were never on your toes. You were never unsure of what was going to happen. You always knew exactly what the movie was going to do, which I guess isn't very interesting. So unfortunately, I just didn't find Pernicious very entertaining. But if you're looking for a movie that has really good blood and gore and pretty girls, I don't know, check it out, it's on Netflix. So the second movie that I want to talk about is going to be The Possession of Michael King, which you should be able to find streaming on Amazon Prime. Uh, and you're going to have to forgive me since it's been a little while since I've seen the movie. So this is a movie about a documentary filmmaker named Michael King, who after the tragic death of his wife decides to make a documentary attempting to prove or disprove Possession in the Afterlife, The Devil or God, basically by doing everything he possibly can to get himself possessed. So he goes and he finds uh, any sort of mystic, any sort of ceremony, any sort of geek with a Ouija board that he can get near and tries to uh, to, to bungle it up or provoke somebody, you know, provoke some entity into possessing him. It's basically like somebody made a movie about YouTuber Lupus Creepus and his Will It Kill Me series. Except that this is fiction, so eventually one of these ceremonies does work and the rest of the movie becomes all these cameras on, on King as he loses himself to the possession and tries to get himself back, save himself and save the relationship that he has with his daughter. And failing as he just goes down and loses himself to the possession and all the, you know, all the good stuff that goes along with that, that you get to see all the bumps in the night. So you get to see all the weird telekinetic activity. I can't think of any particular set piece scare scenes or hauntings, but there are everything that I remember is all handled very well as part of the larger spiral of King just kind of losing himself to the possession and just going down. The movie's not really a slow burn, but it's definitely a movie that is 
playing the long game and playing every single thing that happens as a step along the way to get to the end. Nothing happens just because they needed to have something spooky go on at this point because it's been a while. Everything builds and escalates very well to the conclusion, which I thought was very well executed. So I would say that if you're interested, The Possession of Michael King is definitely worth checking out. I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. And that's time for Instant Screaming today. If you saw any of these movies and wanted to talk about it, please leave a comment below. If you have any suggestions for movies that you'd like to see on the show, please leave a comment and I'll check it out. Uh, otherwise, like this video, subscribe to the channel for more, and if you want to support the show or modern horror, check out our Patreon campaign here. Cheers, folks. Stay tuned for more.